My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hi, this is Molly Rose Speed, and the quote of the day is, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with by Jim Rohn. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to episode 145. You can check out the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash one four five. And before we jump into my conversation with Molly Rose Speed, here is a little bit about today's sponsor. Are you stressed about holiday gifting? Don't be. With Loop and Ty, giving great gifts is simple. Here's how it works. You choose a curated collection of stylish, artisan-made gifts at prices from $10 to $500 per gift. Then your recipients get to choose their own gift from the collection that you send. Go to loopandtie.com and use promo code Leader assistant. That's all caps, two words, leader assistant to get 20% off. And yes, they do ship internationally. So visit loopandtie.com and use the code leader assistant for 20% off. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's your host, Jeremy Burrows, and today I'm speaking with Molly Rose Speed. Molly, I don't know much about you, um, so I'm excited to get to know you today and introduce you to uh, my listeners. Molly, what part of the uh, world are you in? Hey Jeremy, great to be here. I live in Destin, Florida, which is in the Panhandle, beautiful area of the country. Yes, nice. So it's pretty, uh, pretty warm there right now? It's cooling down, but um, temperate based on where you're at in the Midwest, we're, we're feeling some good weather today. Nice. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what you do uh, and who you are? Sure. So I am first and foremost a military spouse, which was something I didn't see coming when I was a bright and bushy-tailed 20-year-old, but married into the military and uh, created a career for myself after ditching corporate America and realizing it wasn't going to work with our lifestyle of traveling all the time and having a deployed husband more than I thought I ever would. And I created a, a training and placement company as a virtual assistant. So worked as a virtual assistant for several years and loved the work that I did and then realized there was a gap in the market for military spouses and, and wanted to fill it by giving them this career opportunity. So that's what led me to where I am today. Nice. So were you ever any other sort of assistant before you were a virtual assistant? That's a great question. I wasn't. I was an analyst uh, at a hospital, so I wanted to do healthcare administration. And before that, I was a executive team leader at Target. So I never really wore the assistant role. I guess in college, I, I did. I was an investment assistant as an intern, but not the traditional EA VA role that we see today. Okay. Uh, Target. That's awesome. I was. I worked at Walmart, so you know. Oh. <laughs> rivals. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. Um, yeah. Okay, so then, you know, obviously the virtual remote work from home uh, role was helpful for you, as uh, as you mentioned. But it, were there, when you were the virtual assistant before you started your firm, um, was there a specialty that you had? Were you a marketing, social media, calendar, you know? events? What, what was your specialty? So I kind of fell into the role. I went to a conference that my client ended up being my client put on in Chicago. And at this conference, it was called Succeed Faster. It's now no longer in existence. But for the first time, and this is over 10 years ago, I learned what an entrepreneur was. And I, I just wasn't exposed to, you know, you can sell a service and make money. I didn't realize you could do that without a, a corporate or a structured organization to funnel that through. Uh, so my first role was actually for the founder of this organization, because I quit my job after <laughs> figuring out that we could do this. And 
it was as a social media manager for a crowdfunding campaign on student loan debt. They were doing a documentary on student loan debt. I had no idea what that entailed and what it meant, but I applied for it and got the job and learned everything I could on it. And we successfully raised $75,000 in doing that. Uh, and then real quickly after that, he, the same person had lost his assistant and he's a public speaker, author, financial coach. And I came on board with him and just kind of learned the ropes through his business over the years. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, so what did you find and what do you find the most challenging as far as, you know, working from home? The most challenging, I think you're definitely in a silo when you're by yourself. You have to make the effort to, you know, get ready some days and actually feel good in front of, even if you're in a Zoom call or get out and go to a coffee shop or network with people. We just, Destin's a pretty small town, so we just got our first uh, co working space. So trying to go there uh, or network with virtual assistants of the like. I think you really have to kind of force yourself into that. Otherwise, days will go by. And especially when my husband's deployed, I'm like, I haven't talked to anyone in real life in five days. So I think that's probably the hardest thing about working virtual. You kind of have to make the effort to, to get out and make make a point to do it. Yeah, so what, what do you like to do when you get out after um, working from home? Yeah, I love uh, meeting girlfriends out and just meeting for wine or, or going to book club like normal <laughs> women do. And then I go to a lot of networking events. So, um, lots, lots of volunteering at like local events. I'm a big extrovert. So I just like being around people as much as I can, but I have to force myself to, to go find those things to do and, um, traveling when my husband's deployed or, or home, I travel as much as possible. This was a lot pre COVID, but it's finally coming back. So when he's gone, I'm in, you'll find me in Europe working remotely. Oh, nice. Yes. What part of Europe? All over. Um, my last trip, I did Budapest, Vienna, Prague. Uh, and then one prior to that, my husband, I was actually in Croatia and then Slovenia. And he met me on the back end of that trip. And we did all of Croatia together, celebrated his birthday in Oktoberfest, and then went over to Ireland. So all over. It's so easy to travel when you're working virtual and when it's just you because it's super affordable hopping in and out of some pretty amazing hostels that I found Mm. um, or Airbnbs. So I I love that life. I'm ready for it again. Nice. Nice. So, okay. So you mentioned that you saw a need in the market um, for the virtual assistant training and, and firm. What what were the steps you took to kind of transition from just being a virtual assistant to actually running a virtual assistant business? Yeah, I was con- consistently having the same conversation. And, you know, what they say, if you repeat yourself more than three to five times, you should record it. Uh, and that's what I did. So I was having coffee with several military spouse peers and, and just women that were interested in what I was doing and saw the lifestyle that I had created for myself I'm like, wow, I'm, I have something here. So I, I just started map, mind mapping what a program would be. You know, there's the business side of running your own virtual assistant company, and there's also the technical side, which you can learn over time. But if you're going through a course, you really need both. I started with really mind mapping the business side. So, uh, you know, starting an LLC, invoicing, pricing, marketing, proposals, contracts, pitching yourself, onboarding clients, communicating with clients, all the, and more that goes into that. And then I added on the technical to really get them up to speed with what online entrepreneurs are really asking for and demanding today. So social media management, um, inbox management, calendar, travel booking, blog posting, simple website updates, uh, and then it gets more complex as, as you go into, you know, course creation and helping authors publish books and all, all those things. Nice. So did you have already have an audience essentially for this program, for this course, or were you like, I just got to get this out there and I'm starting from square one? 
No. Yeah. So that's something I would coach current clients on now to have the audience before you create the program. Um, I had a really great network of military around me and it kind of just started to take off. So I haven't ever really marketed a bunch. A lot of it's been word of mouth and and within the network, it's gone really well that way, but I didn't have a big list. I just started and it, it turned into something. So it's more of a give back to start. And now I realized I have a community and a, a, a really great business out of it. So do how many of your assistants, so you have a, you have two sided, two sides to your business. Maybe you have more, you can share if you have more, but there's the training people on how to be a virtual assistant. And then there's actually providing virtual assistant services to clients. And so you have, you know, I'd be curious to know how many assistants you have on your team and, and all that. But, uh, but yeah, tell us a little bit more about the two sides or maybe three sides if you have another. Yeah. Side. Yeah. So the training portion or, or certification, which we've created over the past couple of years. Um, so, so students come in and purchase the course and they get certified as a virtual assistant through the virtual assistant Academy, which is what we created and join our community. And then they apply for our management team. And we have a little over 40 VAs in the management team actively. And then uh, we have a placement arm. So great network of past clients or people that I've just met over the years that they're like, wow, you've trained virtual assistants. I need a virtual assistant who doesn't really these days. Uh, And that's brought in a really great influx of really amazing business owners needing the services that our virtual assistants are trained in. Uh, So we have a placement agency where a client comes in and purchases a placement through us and we match them with virtual assistants. They interview and hire them directly. Oh, okay. So you, so you take the course and and get certified and then you basically become one of the, um, on the roster essentially. And then you can Mm -hmm. kind of point, match people, match clients with an assistant. And then you're basically hands off after that, after that transaction. Yes, we do have a a model where, um, they, the client, if they prefer to pay us hourly and we oversee the virtual assistant, that's an option. But for the most part, they pay a one-time placement fee and then we, the virtual assistant and the client go on their own relationship, which works out really well for everyone because I really want the VAs to have the autonomy of running their own business and the freedom to do that. Yeah. yeah, But that's, that's how it works. And the placement part surprised me a lot because it's not just what they know, but it's also who they are. So we've come up with a lot of questions and, you know, taking personality tests like DISC or the Enneagram or things like that, that the clients really benefit from to be able to match with the right person. So our success rate's really strong as well. Cool. So are they all, are all the virtual assistants that go through your uh, training, are they all military spouse? Or no, don't have to be. Yeah. Have don't have to be. Um, yeah. Complete range of, of candidates. Primarily we do cause that's our, our network, but mm-hmm. we have, we have everyone. So let us, stay-at-home moms, um, world, we have some digital nomads, and then military spouses are kind of the buckets that we come okay. through. Mm-hmm. Cool. So I'm asking lots of questions because, um, and for those listening who don't know, I, I've never spoke with Molly Rose, and I've never uh, <laughs> haven't done a ton of research on her, and I kind of wanted to try that out and, and let you all learn as I'm learning um, about her academy and um you know, virtual, being a virtual assistant or a remote executive assistant is, is always a topic of interest to executive assistants. Maybe they're thinking, Hey, I want to, you know, a side hustle so that I can make a few, few bucks on the side, even and keep my day job. Some people are thinking, Oh, I want to transition completely to work from home, remote virtual assistant and have my own clients and all that. Um, how have you seen, or, or let's put it this way, Molly Rose, have you seen full-time executive assistants successfully be a virtual assistant on the side, but keep their day job? Not, we haven't had specific executive assistants, side hustle, 
BA, I guess that's what I would call that, but we do have other professionals. So their job ne- wasn't necessarily being an EA during the day, um, but nurses, teachers, um, let's see, some people in like graduate programs that are doing this on the side while they go to school. Nice. So a little, yeah, a little bit of that. So what, if somebody's interested, let's talk about pricing. So do you let the clients and the, and the virtual assistants after you hand it off, like let them agree on pricing or do you kind of start, have a pricing structure to start with? So that's a big uh, thing that we can do during our consulting with the client, making sure that their budget's on par before they even purchase the placement uh, package from us. We want to make sure our BAs are at the adequate price. And we recommend to our virtual, virtual assistants where to start. <clears throat> that keeps getting higher as the world is changing and everyone's going virtual and the demand for virtual assistants is really high, higher than I think the pool is of what's available. Mm-hmm. So we prearrange that between the client, but it is completely dependent upon the virtual assistant and what they want to charge. So we have virtual assistants that charge $22 an hour and some that charge $45 an hour and, and, and all that in between. And we really try to guide them based on what they know and the, the tasks that they're doing for clients versus others because it really is broad what a virtual assistant can do these days and what people think they can do. Yeah, I was going to ask next, what what would you say is the most common, you know, two or three tasks that your clients are looking for a virtual assistant to to handle? I think the biggest is the day-to-day admin that we probably all know, the email inbox management, calendar scheduling, travel booking, just making sure all the communication and everything is kept up to speed for the entrepreneur, client, business owner. Um, Social media is always a big one. And then I think lastly, I kind of started training virtual assistants and we've been marketing on this a little bit, but almost content spinning. So if you think about online entrepreneurs, they create content, but how do you take one piece of content and then spin it? on five different platforms in different ways. So that's something that they've also been working on. So they might take a podcast recording like this and create a blog out of it and post it, get it on YouTube, create social media posts for it, newsletter blasts, all those things to make sure that one piece of content can be delivered in seven to eight different ways. Nice. I'm a big fan of repurposing content. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. (laughs) As an entrepreneur yourself. So, okay, so how, what about leading virtual teams, leading remote teams? What are some things that you've done to kind of uh, cultivate the culture of your virtual team? I think the biggest thing, and this might sound obvious, is communication. I think when virtual teams don't work, it's because something's, there's a breakdown in communication and expectations. So when I teach virtual assistants and we actually are teaching clients too when we discuss this with them to make sure that everyone's off on the right foot forward. It's all about if there's an issue or don't assume something, that's extremely important. Make sure you're talking about it and actually scheduling those times every week to just check in like what's going well, what's not going well, where do we adjust and just making that a part of the conversation. And then secondarily, using a project management tool and getting out of inbox and text and Voxer or whatever form or Skype, whatever form of communication people are used to, using something like Asana or Monday um, or Trello and really sticking to that as a team is so key to just protecting boundaries and keeping people focused. Love it. So what's your favorite project management tool? Definitely Asana. <laughs> where I led with it. I love that company. I think that they're they're great. They're, they're, they're all great. That's just my, I know it inside and out, and that's what I recommend and teach. Nice. All right. Well, so if somebody's listening, thinking, you know what, I think it's time for me to take the jump to being a virtual assistant. Now, you know, most of my listeners are already administrative assistants or executive assistants or chiefs of staff. Um, what, what are the, what, what are the first two steps that you would encourage them to take if they're ready to take that leap and, and try to become a virtual assistant? 
I think if you're coming from a traditional EA role or, or with an organization, it's really about deciding if you want to have this work from home lifestyle, if you want to balance it with your current career, or if you want to transition fully and, and commit to, to being able to do that from home. I think there's a lot of structure that going into an office brings, or even working virtually with an organization, you really are self-motivated working virtually in your own business. So really deciding if that's your skill set, your mindset, and how you want to operate. So I think that's extremely important. And then I always say, you know, being a, a executive assistant, having all the skills likely, but making sure that you can translate those virtually is really important as well. So if you can, you don't necessarily need a traditional training program, but they are out there. And I have my virtual assistant Academy that you can look into if you're ever needing the structure to get started and, or the opportunity to have the placement and the management team to follow. Love it. Uh, and then my last question is pretty much the number one question I get from assistants when they talk about virtual assistant stuff. How do I find clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I love this. So I would argue that most of us don't put ourselves out there enough. And I have seen so much success in creating emails to what I would call your power 100 list. So these are the 100 people in your life that have your back. And if that list is only 50 or 25, that's okay. And you email them and you say, hey, my name is Molly Rose. This is what I'm doing now. I would love for you to keep me in mind if you ever hear of anyone needing an assistant. It doesn't mean that you're asking them to hire you. It means just keep that in mind and be very, very specific in what you're asking for. And translate that also to social media. Facebook and Instagram these days go a mile. So post a headshot, really excited. This is what you're doing. This is what you offer. This is how to get in touch. And Nine times out of 10, when my virtual assistants do that, they get something and it trails. So I think we just need to talk about it more and be really proud of the work that we're doing and and ask for it. That's where it comes down to. Love it. I, uh, I can't remember if it was, shoot, I can't, I can't remember who I originally heard this from, but basically when I was starting my side hustle business, um, there was like a couple of people that I was following that was like, Hey, you know, here's how to get to your first 100 email subscribers. And literally step one was text your uncle, text your friends, text your, you know, your mom and say, Hey, I'm starting this new thing. Would it, would you like me to keep you updated? And if so, what's your email? Mm-hmm. And that's all you do. And you just do that to everybody, you know, like you said, your, what, what did you call it? The list? Power 100 list. Yeah, your Power 100. You do that to your Power 100, and you never know what's going to happen. And um, it just starts starts you somewhere, and then you yeah. can kind of take that momentum and, and run with it. Yeah, and it, you'll start to just, just pay attention, and you'll hear so many people say, oh, oh, my uncle has a, a business selling this. He really needs an assistant. It'll just start to happen. Like, they'll hear it. You're just planting the seeds. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Molly Rose, thanks so much for uh, sharing a little bit about what you're up to um, and being on the show. Some great tips for working remotely, even if you're not a virtual assistant. Um, and then also if you want to become a virtual assistant, what what could people or where can people find you online if they want to learn more? Yeah. So if you're looking to become a virtual assistant, it's virtualassistantacademy.com virtualassistantmanagement.com if you want to find a virtual assistant and I'm at mollyrosespeed.com Perfect. Awesome. Well, I'll put those links in the show notes and I really uh, enjoyed chatting with you. Thanks so much again for being on the show. You as well. Thanks, Jeremy. This is great. I appreciate it. Don't forget to check out our sponsor for this episode, loopandtie.com. Use the code LEADERASSISTANT, all caps, two words, LEADERASSISTANT, at loopandtie.com for 20% off their holiday gifting. And we will talk to you soon. Please review on Apple Podcasts. 
GoBullows.com.